key verse that we've been looking at is in Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 38. Today I'll be reading from the contemporary English version. There it says, Jesus went to every town and village. He taught in their synagogues and he preached the good news about God's kingdom. Jesus also healed every kind of disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he felt sorry for them. They were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, a large crop is in the fields, but there are only a few workers. Ask the Lord in charge of the harvest to send out workers to bring it in. This is the word of God, the people of God. This week, we're going to focus on becoming intentional disciples. Now, before we begin, I think we ought to go back and look at a definition of what a disciple is. And I figure since we're Methodists, why don't we take a look at the Wesleyan understanding of discipleship. This is according to John Wesley's general rules. There he said, a disciple is a witness to Jesus Christ in the world who follows his teachings through acts of compassion, justice, worship, and devotion under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So we are to follow Jesus and his teachings and through the acts of compassion, justice, worship, and devotion and be guided by the Holy Spirit. Junius Dawson simplified the definition by saying, a disciple is one who knows Christ, who is growing in Christ, who is serving Christ and sharing Christ. Now we have our definition of what a disciple is. What are the characteristics that, that we find in a disciple? Well, a disciple worships. A maturing disciple, they will begin each and every day with some form of worship, and they invite others into that worship also. A disciple is part of a community, like we are here. They build relationships with others and share with them the life and the community that they have found in God and through their faith community. A disciple commits to spiritual practices, things like prayer and reading the Bible. They enjoy these practices and they begin to show others how to use them to grow in their faith and to draw closer to God also. A disciple is generous and serves. That would include tithing and giving beyond the tithe as God leads them to. And they also restructure their life and their resources and able to join Jesus in serving others. A disciple is seeking to be more Christ-like. A disciple partners with God and invites others to explore the life and teachings of Jesus. Now, I've said this many times before. I'll say it again. Discipleship is a lifelong process. And we end up going through different stages of development. Just like in our life, we start out as babies and mature to children and on and on. Same thing happens in our discipleship journey. We begin with searching. We're trying to make sense of our life. We're asking questions like, what gives my life purpose? What gives me joy? What gives me fulfillment? We're searching for something more, for a, a genuine community where we belong. We wonder about the Bible and how to experience God. We wonder if there's more to this life than just making money and satisfying our own selfish gains. Now from that stage, we move to our searching. From the searching stage, we move to the exploring stage. During that time, somebody might invite us to a church. 
So we might begin attending sporadically. We begin to feel drawn somehow to all these other people that are following Jesus, and we begin to feel accepted and part of that group. During this stage, we're drawn to the story of God's love, and we begin to explore some of the scriptures. Our generosity begins to develop as we give occasionally, and we try participating in different service projects. We see other people making a difference in their lives and differences in the lives of others, and we want to become a part of that also. Moving towards becoming Christ-like, we explore the life of Jesus by reading our Bibles and attending a Bible study. Our searching and exploring stages, that is where we experience God's prevenient grace. Prevenient grace is when God is working in our lives before we even know God is there. Now from there we begin to progress from exploring to beginning. We worship regularly. We become more aware of God's presence each and every day. We move from receiving hospitality to offering it to others in our lives. We develop our spiritual practices by praying and reading the Bible regularly and opening ourselves up to God. In our generosity and our service, we begin to give regularly of our money, giving of our time, and give of our talents. We understand and respond to Jesus' invitation to serve others, and we work to discovering how God has gifted us in accomplishing these things. During this stage of discipleship, we experience God's justifying grace. That's the time that we accept the call to follow Jesus, to commit to the church, and we seek to become more like Jesus in serving others. From here we begin our growing stage. We're attending worship regularly, and we begin to recognize daily moments of worship. We're also looking for ways to love, accept, and relate to others in the same way that the church and God has lovingly accepted us. We explore our spiritual disciplines and we are drawn closer and closer to God. We continue giving of our resources, our, our time and our talents to God through the different ministries of the church. We're searching for ways to use our gifts, to use our talents, to use our passions. And we begin to apply the teachings of Jesus in our everyday life. Finally, we reach that maturing stage. At this point, we begin to honor and worship every day in everything that we do, whether we're at work or at play. We invite others into that worship. We seek to build relationships with others, sharing with them the life and community that we find in God. We enjoy and we practice spiritual disciplines and we share them with others helping them to grow in their faith and their relationship with God. We give our tithe and beyond as led by God. We restructure our lives and resources to join others to explore this life and teachings of Jesus. During that growing and maturing stage, there we're experiencing God's sanctifying grace. That's the process by which we're made holy, and made whole. John Wesley talked about sanctification in terms of going on to Christian perfection. It's an entire holiness of our hearts and of our lives. This morning I've provided a chart for you up here. After the service I invite you to come up. I think I made enough for all the families so that they can share one to look at. I did this so you could kind of get a, a sense of where you might be on that discipleship journey. You might discover some areas that need a little bit of growth in. For example, you might identify yourself in the growing stage, but find in the area of spiritual practices you're still back in the beginning stage. Or you might consider yourself a, a maturing disciple, but realize that your generosity is still in the 
exploring stage. Now, I don't want you to use this chart to grade yourself on where you are on your journey. It's simply intended to help you see that there are always ways and always places in our lives that we could use some more improvement. Now, formulating intentional discipleship systems and helping others along on the journey, the early Methodists, they created what they called class meetings. They also had band meetings and they had select societies. John Wesley has set these up to assist new disciples in their faith, to help them grow and mature as disciples. Within these groups, the Methodists were encouraged to follow Wesley's general rules. I believe it would be well for us to put these into practice in our own lives also. First, we're to do no harm. We do this by avoiding evil of any kind. Second, we're to do good as often as we can to as many as you can. And that includes our own bodies and souls. Third, we're to stay in love with God. We're to practice the means of grace taught to the disciples by Jesus. Those means of grace are works of mercy and works of piety. John Wesley believed that we needed to combine these works of mercy and piety along with our spiritual journey. These works of mercy include things like feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, caring for the sick, visiting those in prison, sheltering the homeless, and welcoming the stranger. Our works of piety include public worship of God, reading God's word, participating in the Holy Communion, having family and private prayer, searching the scriptures, fasting and abstinence. These are the things that we're to practice as we mature in our discipleship journey. <coughs> now, for groups to become intentional about discipleship, it all begins with leaders. Everything rises and falls on leadership. <clears throat> leadership begins with leading yourself. How you lead yourself shapes how you will lead others. So discipleship is leadership. As we mature in discipleship, we become leaders. Since the time of the Protestant Reformation, the biblical principle of the priesthood of all believers has been lifted up. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4-5 through 5 says, As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. In our early Methodist movements here in the United States, clergy would go on horseback from town to town, offering the gathered Methodist societies communion, baptism, and oversight and instruction concerning their discipleship and how to engage in the community. The pastor then would get on his horse and move on to the next town, leaving those disciples to continue the work. They were leaders who equipped others to exercise leadership. They understood the direction that they needed to travel in becoming mature disciples. And as they traveled that path of discipleship, they're able to influence, influence the head the hands and hearts of others to follow them along on that journey. Disciples as leaders help others discover their pathway to healthy discipleship and to grow their commitment to Jesus. Disciples leading disciples is the most effective way of changing the culture of the church. 
Through intentional discipleship, the results are healthy, growing congregations with people who take their relationship with Jesus seriously and are passionately committed to inviting others to know Jesus in the same way. This morning, I would like for us to take a look at how the fictional Park Grove United Methodist Church discovered what intentional discipleship means and what it looks like. Some of you might remember this video from a few years ago when we went through the study of the committee, which was put out by the United Methodist Communications and, as we know, Chuck Knows Church. So take a look at this video. 